Hi, my name is Jesse Durham. Welcome to another episode where today we're going to be addressing the infinite banking concept and the fairly common enough issue of uninsurability, being denied insurance yourself. Okay, when we talk about insurance for the purposes of practicing the infinite banking concept, we're talking about properly structured policies for the banking purpose, okay, with a mutual company that has for well over 100 years been paying a dividend. So whole life, mutual company, all these different attributes for the infinite banking concept. Now, Nash always said that our need for finance is greater than our need for a death benefit. And yet, this asset, this appreciating asset, this tool, this vehicle, this entity, as he called it, is this properly structured whole life policy with a mutual company. So, let's address then the issue of uninsurability. You know, firstly... If someone is, you know, studying and vetting and learning about this idea of becoming your own banker and that's coming to your mind, you know, my first question is, is do you know that you are uninsurable or do you just suppose that you may be? You know, because what I would suggest always is that we start by owning policies on ourselves. It's the most practical place to be able to start. Now, in the event that someone is legitimately unable to procure insurance on themselves for whatever health reason, I would like to actually address the subject from the beginning because if we are, you know, if you're clients and you're thinking intergenerationally like Nash promoted and like I continue to promote on the channel here, that we think long range, that we think four, five, six, seven, eight generations into the future, the best way to be able to approach uninsurability is to consider getting policies on the newborns in our family. Because obviously a newborn child is going to have a lot less underwriting issues to be able to address for a policy to be issued. Um, you know, there are some considerations there. Again, and I would preface by saying that, you know, the parents or the grandparents or whomever should have policies on themselves first. That is the most practical place to start. And when we talk about the subject of insurability, naturally I should be insured before I consider getting policies on my children in almost every case. Why wouldn't I? It's much more pertinent that I be covered if we are going to address death benefit and such the the loss that my family would risk if I were not insured it's much more important that I provide for my children in that way than that I be covered by having insurance on them for whatever expenses and and financial loss obviously there would be a a, a drastic you know spiritual emotional psychological uh, loss there in that event and even though it's a hard subject, it's a necessary one. You know, there's, as it said, there's there's nobody getting out of this alive. And, and the term that I like to use is the one that I've heard in this realm of the infinite banking concept, which is graduate. You know, we're all going to graduate. So it's great to think long range. It's great to think intergenerationally. It is the utmost loving thing that we can do to think of others uh, first, in my opinion. So let's continue this talk then of, of insurability and policies and practicing the infinite banking concept because naturally we emphasize the living benefits of practicing this idea of becoming your own banker. And we do so with these policies. So we're going to talk about insurable interest and, and things of that nature. So policies on newborns to reemphasize are a great are a great way to minimize the work that needs to be done in underwriting to have a policy issued on a member of our family. So it's a great place to be able to start. You know, just to give some rough ideas, um, children are normally able to be insured as far as the death benefit goes, up to half of what an adult, a parent, is insured for. And, and there are some other parameters, and I'd be happy to have that conversation with anybody. 
that's thinking long generation, intergenerationally long range like we are. And one more thing that I would like to point out, in every case this is true, but especially when we consider getting policies that do start on newborns or children is that when looking at the life of a policy and when we see the growth of cash values that are available and we see that that grows on weekends, on holidays, you know, regardless of, you know, the volatility of the market or, or any other factors, when we see that there is a growth curve to this policy, naturally the sooner we start, the sooner we begin to realize the more efficient, the more productive years of that policy. So again, Nash talked about an even distribution of ages in his book as well. That's its, that's its own subject, but I'll mention that here because, again, we should start by having policies on ourselves regardless of age if we are able to, but also when we consider that there is this growth curve, the sooner that that is initiated, the sooner we can realize more and more and more productive or efficient years of that policy in accessing the cash values in that policy for practicing the infinite banking concept, but also when we look long range and we and we see in the latter years of that policy just how much you know, passive income could be um, received from that policy if it's been properly structured uh, it would be able to do that and there would just be so many options for the owner along the way uh, here perhaps it's even a, a good time to mention that a policy is transferable so if indeed if authentically someone is unable to get a policy on themselves, just like the example in the book on page 82 where Nash is talking about the subject, if a parent were to get a policy on a child, for example, one of their children, which naturally we could see some insurable interest there because from a parent's perspective, as they see themselves getting older in age, naturally a child would be a very viable option for a caretaker for that parent so they have an insurable interest in making sure that in the in the event that that child graduates before the parent themselves it would be financially sound and helpful to have a tax-free transfer of a death benefit to help cover the cost to help to help offset the risk that that parent runs that perhaps a child would graduate before they do themselves. So that insurable interest there is seen, uh, the practicality of it. But again, the real focus on this channel, that, and that's not to negate the death benefit. You can't have cash values today that you can access for the purpose of practicing the infinite banking concept without having a death benefit that's represented in those cash values. So it's all necessary, all part, but we do focus on the living benefits, what we get to do with this appreciating asset of a whole life policy that's been properly structured for the here and now, regardless of age. And yet that's a very viable example as we see in Nash's work. A parent having a policy that's on a child but that they own so that they then can therefore practice financing for themselves the the banking function and then of course there are the options later on of being able to transfer the ownership of that policy and I would like to say that regardless of the numbers because there, there is an illustration on page 83 in this particular section where Nash is talking about uninsurability and practicing the infinite banking concept by having a, a policy on a child in this particular example. Regardless of the actual numbers themselves, what we see are the principles being played out. So I, I know that the numbers may differ in today's interest environment and such, and yet the principles of having insurable interest on someone that you can own a policy and therefore access the cash values of that policy 
four financing things in your life that you're going to finance anyway, but doing that on your own terms with ownership and control and by owning this appreciating asset of the whole life policy. We see other concepts laid out such as being able to obtain a passive income in later years, being able to transfer the ownership of that policy and lots of other great things. So again, I highly recommend reading Nelson's chapter on what if I'm uninsurable to be able to see more on those subjects. Now, in the event that family may not be an option because obviously a grandparent could consider their insurable interest that they may have in a child or a grandchild. Likewise, a child or a grandchild could consider getting a policy when it's when it's the appropriate time, whether they're insurable or not. Actually, uh, to be able to build out a system of policies, again, this is this is definitely on a case by case basis. But a child or a grandchild could consider getting a policy if there is insurable interest on a parent or a grandparent, vice versa, okay? In the event of a business looking to acquire more policies, again, whether somebody's uninsurable or not, obviously key employees, key, I mean, partners, if definitely if there are any partners in the business, it would, it would behoove each person that has an interest in that business to consider having a policy to offset the risk of a partner graduating early, of course, uh, to have options to be able to buy out that portion of the business and, and take care of each other's families and use insurance in, in that sense, um, but all while being able to use this properly structured whole life policy for the banking purpose needs of that business. And again, I'm not even necessarily saying that a business should own. Actually, I, I would ask everyone to consider privately owning all of the policies that they have. And again, that's a discussion that we can have together if that's something that you would like to know more about. But I would actually encourage us to consider having all of the policies that we own uh, privately, not necessarily through a business, but consult your tax advisor, your lawyer, your accountant, your other professionals, your other financial professional advisors. But in the event of a business, again, we could look at key employees or partners or other folks that we may be able to get uh, policies on, may want to consider getting policies on um, to protect our interests there and the risk that we may be assuming as a partner, as an owner of a business that does rely heavily on these key folks in the business. You know, I would say that it actually merits mention at least because we could have separate and individual episodes on that type of information that there are such things as bank owned life insurance. You know, a lot of times when folks ask me or they have a a reflexive argument against whole life or the infinite banking concept and they ask you know well why whole life you know I point out that banks commercial banks are the largest purchasers of whole life insurance so why you know my I, I asked the question right back why would they do that and that's worth evaluating that's worth considering uh, there's company-owned life insurance where companies own life insurance but there are entities companies and entities out there that will procure insurance on key personnel or employees or individuals because they recognize the value of owning those policies by insuring people that are key folks but that also gives them the benefit of a tax-free death benefit on the graduation of that person because they retain, and even if that person goes to work somewhere else, they can still retain the ownership on that policy. So a couple things to be able to consider there. So really, I think when addressing this idea of what if I'm insurable, you know, what I would say is 
I would ask why that's being brought up. Let me just go ahead and put that here. I don't mind having a personal conversation with anybody that would like to vet this idea for themselves. But if you say that you're uninsurable, you know, are you looking for a reason not to practice this and just say, well, I'm uninsurable. So, you know, my hands are tied. I can't do anything because, you know, Nash has an example in his book. You know, I would say that where there's a will, there's a way when it's when it's done well and in order. Obviously, when there is indeed an authentic, insurable interest present and there's a party that does want to actively practice becoming their own banker. Again, this I'm not trying to become your banker. I don't want you to become my banker. But for those that are looking to actively begin their journey of becoming their own banker, of accounting for their need for finance in whatever your financial footprint looks like, whether you are a household, a business owner, or an investor, when you want to begin accounting for the banking function in your life, you know, don't let uninsurability or what you think may be uninsurability keep you from pursuing this for yourself. So I hope that this has been helpful and encouraging all of us to get back in Nash's book to approach this idea of uninsurability for those that do wish to practice the infinite banking concept. It can be done. And if you can't get enough answers from the book, that's what I'm here for. Call 828-817-4223 or email durhamtalents at gmail.com so we can see how you could practice the infinite banking concept in your household, in your business, in your investing. And I look forward to our next conversation. Have a great day. Take care.